So we can run the software, which is Fluke Power, Power Analyze. This software is included on the USB memory stick, which is included in the package with the instrument. Before we run the software, because we're going to have to connect to it, we'll just check which port we're assigned to. Currently, there's no port assigned to it, and that's because I haven't got the instrument plugged in. If you have a lot of devices plugged in, then a lot of uh, COM ports will be taken up. In this case, I, I know that the next one that appears in the list is going to be the one which matters. So this is COM port 3. So now I'll go back to the Power Analyze software, and I can go to Remote and Connect. And in here, I have, I'm connected via USB. Here, I can choose the port I'm connected to. Uh, the board rate is selected as 921 600. That's the fastest it can get. That's what it should be. Um, and it has end of line characters, carries return line feed, which is again correct for this uh, setup. That has to align with what's the C report setting in the device manager, which is this is the default anyway. So we connect it to the instrument now, and you'll see that it goes through this list of things that it's done. And in effect, this has now become our control panel or controls for the instrument. The instrument goes into a mode uh, where it will just indicate that you need to go to local. So you don't have any control of the instrument when this is running. So here are the settings. Um, if we go to uh, the preview of the device, we can select from the list here of the measurements that we want to make. So we'll say those three, that's the three voltages, and we'll do the same for the fundamental voltages. Um, we also have a list here, and you see the whole list of devices, uh, sorry, of measurements that you have available. There's a lot of them. Here we have a tab to go to the next section, which is to the, go to the uh, current section effectively. And we'll just select one IRMS. I've only got one current probe connected here, so that, that's that's OK. So now I'll go OK, and here we see the readings. And it's that simple. If I wanted to capture the screen, I could just say print screen. And now that's captured the screen capture to the directory Fluke data, Fluke Power Analyze software screen. 479200 and this is the serial number of the device and if I open that directory after this so I just open the directory we see in the directory that we have a file here and if we look at the file it's just a PNG file that's a graphics file it pops over to the other screen so I'll just drag that across and you can see it looks exactly uh, the same as what we just saw on screen a moment ago so that's screen saving, really simple. So go back to the main software now, just close that down, get rid of that. And now we're back on this screen. So um, one of the functions we have here is that we can go to the scope mode here. So we see the scope, we see the waveforms. Here the uh, we have different waveform shapes because we have different scaling here set. And uh, let's just see whether that changes when we do auto. Yep. So on auto, it's now returned to give us waveforms which are all the same shape. On here, we can add cursors. So we add cursors to whichever channel we want. So one, two, or three for voltage, the, the measurements that we have. We'll just leave that on two for now. And um, we click on the cursor. And now we'll see at the cursor, we'll get uh, either dual verticals like this, Or we can have a single vertical. You can just drag it along. And this gives you the minimum maximum at that point and also gives you what the average is here as well for that point in time. So very simple. Uh, just use it a couple of times and you'll you'll kind of get the, the idea of, of how it all works. Uh, other things we have, of course, are the trend again. Very simple, we just select which items we want to trend. Let's do OK. And now we're, we'll start trending in a moment. We'll just, let's see, we do this automatically and refresh. And we, we'll get a trend after a little while. Then we have the phaser, phaser diagram. So we, here we show voltage and currents. We see that we only have one current connected on here. It's pretty low current, 
but you, you'll see that it looks like a standard phase diagram, phase diagram. And then similar with harmonics, um, you can choose the type of harmonics that you have. So you go to the list, we'll choose U1 and choose Use 1. You can just have one at a time. And uh, then we get the readings here and we can see what that looks like. We can choose either the histogram or a table. You see that in the table we'll get some values in a moment. Or we can also choose the FFT. Here we get the FFT mode, which you'll see on the instrument. So this is going from 0 to 20 kilohertz. So we just have this, this peak here, which is the fundamental in this case. And then we'll have some other uh, items here. You see the little values bubbling along the bottom. Uh, we can also put this into a logarithmic mode so we can see that more clearly. So here we see the fall off of harmonics. Very low harmonics, but uh, gives us some, some ideas about what, what to do. Um, so very straightforward here we're having the 400 hertz, sorry, 4 kilohertz value. So we change frequency to zoom in if you like. So we can see more clearly uh, each of the harmonics. So th that's just displaying information. When it comes to setup, uh, we can go to the configuration. And here are all the settings that we have inside the instrument. So we do this per channel. So we have per channel, channel one voltage range ratio we can input here we can put in whether we have a voltage line filter 650 or 10 kilohertz that depends on the kinds of measurements you're making um you got the current line filter as well you can go to each of the channels independently so for example if you have three acs and dc you can do that then we have the motor setup so this is everything that you'll see on the instrument and then the wiring diagram that is how we're connected in this case we just have a single phase connection uh, you'll see these diagrams in the manual as well and you can choose where you want to synchronize from uh, whether you want to synchronize from current or voltage or which channel and if you have a split like this one where you've got three phase four wire and then you've got an independent channel on the end uh, you can choose two synchronization points. So if one of them is DC, for example, you can choose DC from here as well. Once you've made your choices, you just write to instrument with those changes. Uh, here we can also zero off if we're doing just checking the calibration. Um, we also have a basic uh, collection of, of methods of formulating the, uh, the HFF, which is the... Uh, the crest factor and the voltage factor for harmonics in here, uh, which is specifically related to motors. Uh, so just go back to range. So you can see that that we have all the settings that you'd have in the instrument. So that's more or less it. Um, there is some additional information like what the instrument is that you've got connected. Uh, also, if you're going to a two machine formulation, so in this, uh, you would have two machines connected simultaneously. So you have two normas and you can synchronize them together so that you can expand up to eight channels. So that's a very quick introduction to the software. It's very simple to use. Playing around with it is probably the easiest way to learn about it.